Lantern Festival. We're going to find out more about that today with Zach Schlien. Uh, he's here from a company called uh, Filter Off. I didn't get that quite right. Filteroff.com. Welcome to the show, Zach. Hi, Jay. How's it going? Good. So you had a creative idea, you know, and, um, you know, Think Tech thinks of creative ideas all the time. Yours was video dating and actually it reminds me of speed dating in the in the venture capital world. I don't know if you've ever been involved in that, but it's just, I think it's the same thing. What is video dating? Yeah, so Filter Off is a video speed dating app. We run hundreds of events and you can attend one of these events that interest you in video speed date with other like-minded singles. Aha, singles, dating, video, events. That's the part I get stuck on the word events. So here you have a lantern event. What is a lantern event and how does that relate you know, to, to, to dating on video? Yeah, so with Filter Off, uh, we host all sorts of events. Um, some are national events, festivals, sporting events. In this case, uh, the Lantern Festival um, that's happening. Um, and we host these events so you can meet other singles that have interest in that sort of event. And then you can discuss the event and maybe attend in person uh, together. And it's just a great way that goes beyond the swipe. So it actually allows you to speak to humans. Okay, this is, but this is all video, right? It's all Zoom or something like Zoom? Yeah, so it's hosted on the Filter Off app, our own proprietary uh, video experience with different icebreaker games. Um, but yeah, similar to Zoom, but all hosted on our platform. You know, you know, Zach, I, I hope it doesn't bother you, but I'm married and I was going to try the app but I thought, hey, my wife, she might stand behind me while I did that. <laughs> then I'd be in trouble. <laughs> so give us an idea of what the experience is like. Let's suppose um, my wife wouldn't mind. Uh, and I, I got on the app. How, how, would, how would that work? Yeah, so the app, it's free. It's available on Android, iOS, as well as the web. So you first can... Uh, browse through different events based off your interests. So uh, the Lantern Festival you may see, uh, you are RCP to that event. An hour before the event begins, they'll ask you to confirm that you'll be there. You click confirm, and then we schedule your dates based off your preferences. So you may have one day at, let's say, 8, 803, 806, et cetera, et cetera. And then when 8 o'clock rolls around, you press start date, and you're entered into a live video chat speed date. And you're speed dating with this other single. And then once the date concludes, uh, it will ask you whether you like each other. And then you go to your next date. Once the event concludes, you'll see if you have any matches. And if you do match with anyone, you could then message or video call with them as long as you'd like. Huh. Okay. Let me, let me take that into some detail. <laughs> okay. So um, the, the event, in this case, uh, a lantern event's coming up. Well, where is that? What is that? Is that a real event uh, or is that a virtual event? Yeah, so most of the events on our platform are virtual. Um, again, we, we see it as a really efficient way for you to meet like-minded singles. We also are starting to now host in real life events as well. So a mix of all sorts of events on the platform. Okay, and, and now I have a little schedule in front of me and it's broken down into, I, said, I, I imagine, I surmise from what you said, they're three minute intervals. Um, and, you know, you know, that's a that's a perfectly reasonable period of time <laughs> to accept or reject, because the truth is, if you know, if you're in touch with your own intuition, you know whether you want to pursue this after a three minute engagement. Yeah? Um, so, OK, so I, I want to have, say, five speed dates. I can just fill in the three minute intervals. Suppose I'm really a hungry, a hungry fellow and I want to have 20 uh, yeah, speed dates. Can I do that? Yeah. So for the events themselves, you'll get up to 10 dates uh, for the events hosted by Filter Off. But the beauty is as a platform, we actually enable organizers or if you host your own community to you create your own event. So if you have a, an interest or a certain uh, sort of community you could create your own event on the Filter Off app, totally free of charge. 
And you could share that with your audience and you can make it up to 15 dates if you'd like. Um, so yeah, we, we give you uh, the, a, a platform that you can configure and really uh, have a great experience. Okay, so the uh, what's it going to tell me about the Lantern event that would form a common denominator between me and my various states? Yeah, so one is location. So we have all sorts of events. So like the Lantern event, it's in uh, Hawaii. Um, and then when you do... I was going to ask you about that. So it's the Lantern event right here in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. okay. But yeah, it could be exactly. anywhere. It could be anywhere, right? So we also have all other sorts of events as well um, in different uh, locations or some that are a bit broader as well. Uh, so it really just varies on the filter off app and you can see that right in the platform. Um, but again, given that it's that sort of themed event, when you go on your dates, ask them, have you been to the Lantern Festival before? Uh, like it's a beautiful festival. Um, I know like every year about like 40,000 Hawaiians and tourists like gather. Um, so it's quite large and it's fun. So, and then maybe you meet someone that you really like and you could go uh, sometime with them. What makes you pick the Lantern event for this, for now, for your promotions now? Are you operating in Hawaii? Yeah, so we have uh, events. We've hosted now over close to 7,000 events um, since the pandemic. Uh, so we've kind of attached ourselves to all sorts of events. So like coming up, uh, the Super Bowl, we have a Super Bowl event, we have Valentine's Day, we have Valentine's Day. So all sorts of holidays and national events. Yeah, it gives me something to talk to my dates about. Uh, I, I suppose, um, you know, if I was a smart guy, I would read up a little on the event. So I wouldn't, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't be a dunce when she asked me questions about the day, about the other uh, event. No? Um, so I, I, I should probably do a little Googling, a little research about the event um, before I actually talk to her so I can sound like I know what I'm saying. No, no I, I think that's, that makes sense. And uh, you could kind of share your thoughts on the event, or you could say, maybe we could go together. I've never been, but it looks super cool. Um, so that's what filter off is about for you to authentically connect with other singles and going way beyond the swipe. What do you mean way beyond the swipe? I saw that on your, your site. It's very interesting the way your site works. I'm going to talk about that, but you say going beyond the swipe. What, what's the swipe? Maybe I haven't lived long enough. I, I don't know what a swipe is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in 2012, uh, like Tinder kind of made online dating acceptable or cool. And they used a swipe functionality similar to like being in a casino. It's very addicting, but it does not provide a very uh, intense or a good human experience. It's, it's, it's more of an addictive nature. And you're swiping based off what they look like, not really who they are as a person. Um, and we filter off, we remove that experience and we bring it back down to a, an easy and effective way to actually connect with another human. So going beyond the profile, you don't need to have those witty profile lines and pictures, it's just about you and the person. Yeah, but you get some background also, right? Yeah, so before your dates, um, you could actually learn about your date. Um, they could uh, add some fun facts, a bio. So you actually have some understanding of who this person is going into it. And again, it's a three-minute date. If, if you're not a fit, it's only three minutes. And if you are, maybe your person. You know, I was tossed on whether to ask you about Tinder Swindle, um, which I'm sure you've heard about it, you know, as being in the business. Um, but you mentioned it, so now I have to ask you about it. That was a very, very, very interesting movie. And I guess it was all about the app called Tinder. Can you talk about it? And you talk about why that could never, never happen on Filter Off. Yeah, so um, I, don't, I, don't, I just want to say that with swipe apps, you never know who is beyond, behind the profile. Um, <laughs> with Filter Off, even if it's a video first experience, you won't have that experience of being catfished or, I mean, scammed, right? So it's like, it's, it, it brings it down to a much more human experience. You see who you're speaking to. Obviously, you have to use your best judgment if this is someone you want to continue to chat with or potentially meet with. But swipe apps are designed to just stay on the profile and just kind of swipe forever. 
Well, just to, so if anybody is watching who doesn't know about Tinder Swindle, it's a cable movie on, I think, Netflix. And it's about this, um, this fellow who swindles people using Tinder. And he, he, um, he has like a half a dozen of them that he's swindling at the same time. And he gets them to um, give him money, uh, kind of a Ponzi scheme. He, he takes money from one and he spends it on the other and, and sort of lives a very high lifestyle with, um, you know, jet planes and fancy cars and clothes and um, incredible what he does. And this is a true story, by the way, right? True story. And uh, they finally caught him, but not. <laughs> they caught him. And the only place he was prosecuted was in his home, which was in Israel. Uh, and, um, and there he got a relatively light, uh, light sentence. And um, he probably went back to it. <laughs> it's a very funny movie because it's all about love. How do you appeal to that? Or do you make a, con you know, a conscious effort to appeal to that? Yeah, so I just lost you for a second. We just froze. But are you saying to appeal to in terms of? What, what, what people need for love. And in the movie, it was especially women, and the guy was a scammer. But I suppose it's really both both sides of the equation. Um, they may be lonely, especially now in the time of COVID, right? Yeah. At home and not getting out much and uh, afraid. And so uh, this fills a need for a lot of people, and increasingly so. I mean, I, I, I think you'll probably agree with me that there's a future in this. Um, it's, it's not just a, a static app. It's an app with a, with a future in our society. So how do you appeal or do you intentionally want to appeal to their need for companionship, for love, for connection? Yeah, so Filterov definitely hits on a different sort of data than most traditional swipe apps. I call them intentional daters. Uh, they're looking for that sort of connection. They want to actually meet up. And um, with Filter Off, given it's a video first experience, what we noticed during the pandemic is how fundamentally disconnected people were. And that definitely helped fuel me uh, to uh, provide people that sort of connection. And being a video first experience uh, allows for them. We've created a number of marriages since. Really? Marriages? You keep, you, <laughs> you count cool on that? I mean, do, do, you, do you have stats on, on marriages that resulted from engagements on filter up? Yeah, I mean, we, we've had a number of marriages, one of which was covered in the Times. Um, so we have a lot of these communities who host events for their members. And it's, it's been really effective in creating hundreds of matches. And just with the numbers, if you create hundreds of matches, one may lead to uh, something pretty great. In any event, it's fun. You sharpen your own skills. You sharpen your perceptions. Uh, you sharpen your ability to read people virtually, which is a, a, a skill that we, we didn't have a couple of years ago. <laughs> now we have. Yeah. So um, you know, why are you doing this? Are you doing this for the altruistic side of it, to make a better life for all these people? Or you do it for money? Do you do it for, I don't know, for the, the, the thrill of doing new technology? What are you doing it for? Yeah, um, I've been an avid online dater when I was growing up, and I used all the swipe apps and was quite dissatisfied uh, with my experience of swiping for hours. And yeah, I may get a match, but then nothing comes from it. And then maybe I, I meet them in person and we just don't have chemistry. And I was just so frustrated with this long process. So I asked my dates beforehand to be open to video chatting and very few agreed. They thought it was weird, but the ones that agreed, I was like, wow, this experience is so much better and it feels healthier. And I wanted to create the norm for a video first experience where video was the mechanism for singles to connect and the pandemic happened and people really got on board with video. And, and now it's just, our goal is to facilitate authentic human connection for singles around the world. You're making money? Uh, so for events, uh, you can sell tickets on uh, the platform. We take a percentage, um, but the goal is to just grow this app and. When people think of connecting to humans, they think of filter off. So, but the, you know, the problem is that 
you want to grow your your base, your mailing list. You want to grow your membership, your followers, all that, right? It's social media in its own ways. You see, if you want my opinion, it's the ultimate social media. <laughs> but you know, they're all going to get married. And if they get married, you know, and you see them come back, you know, there's a problem. <laughs> there is a problem. And, and here's the thing. People talk about that a lot. We're like, well, you're, it's almost like you're, you want to lose users in some ways. But here's the beauty. If you provide a successful experience, people always ask, where did you meet? And then they say filter off, then they join filter off. Um, there's a big enough dating pool uh, where it's okay to lose users. And at least we're doing it uh, for a awesome means. You know, one thing that strikes me is that uh, when you're talking about anonymous connection, I mean, it's not anonymous once you get to actually talk to them. And, you know, I mean, I, I do these talk shows with people like you and uh, a lot of women, and I really get to know them in spending in half an hour. I feel like, you know, I really know them. And, and it's a skill to see through the virtual, you know, and see the person and all that. Truth is, you never forget it. You always remember these engagements. I, I will remember talking with you for a long time, and you will probably remember talking with me for a long time and all that. And so there's a, there's a real benefit in, in, in meeting that way. However, and it's not a question of scamming so much. It's a question of abuse. It's a question of you know, taking advantage, using it as a 900 number kind of thing. Um, and, um, um, you know, sort of a, a way to prostitution or promiscuity, uh, a way to violate norms or the law. Uh, how do you prevent that? Yeah, so we have robust reporting features. So if any users do anything inappropriate or seem like they're trying to scam you in any way or ask for money or even ask you to video chat off the platform and you don't feel comfortable, you could always report them. And um, with robust reporting capabilities, uh, we will remove that user. It's tied to the phone number so they can never create an account again on filter off. So we take that extremely seriously. It happens then. So there's always bad actors, right? But that's why you have functionality in place. And again, with an app like filter off being a video first experience, you can't catfish. So but there's always people that could be somewhat malicious um, and we do everything possible to keep a really safe and uh, fun experience. But you don't listen. Hmm? You don't listen. No, no, everything is encrypted. Uh, we don't have access to the videos all through the carrier using something called web RTC technology. It's encrypted in transit as well as uh, in storage. So you have no idea what they're talking about. And if if you want to know if somebody's doing something outside the norm, um, you, you have to wait for somebody to report it to you um, that there's, there's an abuse going on of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we take I think privacy is fundamental um, for any technology platform or company. And we take privacy extremely seriously. And if there is a case of some sort of uh, re a report comes in, we take that very seriously, we will inspect. Um, and usually bad actors will do it to multiple people. So you can just see if there's been a number of reports and then uh, just like action. the movie, this just because <laughs> if you find a bad actor is doing things on your system, you know, it's not just a one off. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, I get it. it but I, the point that's important to make is, is much more difficult to do anything inappropriate or in poor taste on a platform like filter off given the video first experience when you're hiding behind a profile it is very easy to send messages uh to scam people and that's why these swipe apps have a huge problem with scammers and fake profiles yeah what filter off how did you get that name what does it mean there's got to be an underlying meaning there what is it yeah i mean in today's age right with instagram and snapchat it's all about the filter. And with filter off, it's about uh, showing your authentic self and not being afraid to show that. And it's removing the filter, quote unquote. What great fun. Now, it, it just so happens. And, and uh, if I wasn't married, you know, maybe I would I would like, for example, Italian women from Italy. Or I would like um, Albanian women or Tibetan women or Indian women. Um, you have this for me? 
Yeah, so you can uh, set preferences um, for different ethnicities or religions. What we also have is a lot of communities will host events for a religious community as well. So it's very configurable. And, and our goal is it's, it's to serve every sort of data um, to find your match. So this has got international implications. So there are Tibetan women who would go to a Tibetan festival, for example, and I could meet them there on filter off and, and get to know them. Um, I don't speak Tibetan, but you know, maybe they speak English. Uh, what do you do with different languages? Um, you know, uh, sometimes you, you might have a problem and uh, one side or the other will not know what, what language. Yeah, I mean, it's a really valid point, right? And I think that's a good problem to have as we, I mean, like I mentioned, we've rolled out, like have hosted now like close to 7,000 virtual speeding events. We also host uh, a few times a week, a global date night, which is really fun. You'll meet people from around the world. Um, and yeah, if there's a case where they don't speak the same language, that obviously is difficult. Um, we also have local day nights, so that will uh, help you meet someone in the, to speak the same language. Eventually, we'll roll out uh, uh, different translations of the app. Right now, it's English only, but uh, as we continue to grow, we'll, we'll roll that out. There's also the you know, political implications. Uh, I mean, for example, I suppose you could pass classified information. Um, not to say that that happens very much in the context of dating, but uh, and also, um, you could have an argument over political things. But for example, if I am shocked and surprised to find that a person who I thought was not you know, politically wedded to Trump all of a sudden is talking to me about Trump um, or various political issues that follow Trump, that would leave me very cold. And um, you know, I suppose I could say to this person, look, it's been nice uh, joining you for 15 seconds, but I got to go now. Uh, <laughs> could I could I terminate that early? Could I say bye? Yeah, you have the ability to end a call at any point in time. Yeah. And do they get into arguments? Do, do people have bad experiences? Um, I mean, again, the answer is given that we don't have access to video and nor do we want access to video. I can't give you a definitive answer, but when you have 7,000 events, I'm sure there are some bad dates um, where people may argue. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that must be very, very, very interesting. Although you're not going to listen to them, maybe you could ask for testimonials afterward. How did it go? I mean, do you do exit interview kind of thing? How did it go? How was it for you? Yeah. I mean, when you uh, delete the app, we ask, how was your experience? And we say like, People say like, found love on your app. Um, I think I found my first, and, like it's so cool to see why people delete an app. Um, for the positives, I know for the negatives, you take them and that's how you learn. You see how you can potentially uh, make your platform, your app experience even better. How about the demographic? Um, you know, I can, I can see seniors, I <laughs> really, I can. I can see seniors doing this. Um, especially if they've lost a spouse, you know, and they're alone and so forth. Um, do they? And what about juniors? I mean, what about kids who are maybe minor, minors? Um, how yeah. do you control that? Because that may not be the best arrangement for them. Uh, how yeah. do you control it? How do you track it? Yeah. So uh, to answer your first question, um, the app is for all ages. Uh, we have users as young as 18 to in their 70s, which is really cool because um, we want to serve all audiences. We have events, a divorced and widowed single date night as well. So again, it caters to all sorts of people. Um, to answer your second question, the app is 18 plus. So again, that's very important to keep no minors on our platform. It's not what our app is about. Um, if So you have to uh, uh, put in your age when you uh, join. And um, again, we would take swift action if there's anything inappropriate. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, the thing about it is you're in, you're in technology, you're in cutting edge technology. I, I consider Zoom and, and the like WebEx and you know, uh, the others uh, cutting edge technology and, and they're competing with each other. They're trying to find out, 
you know, how to get ahead of the other guy. They're trying to organize meetings and human contact uh, in, in larger groups, uh, groups around the world and so forth. Um, and so, and we're doing, how do we do that? So we understand how you have to keep at the cutting edge and you have to keep at the cutting edge. I'm sure you think about that all the time as an entrepreneur. So the question is, uh, there's two parts of this question, is how do you keep at the cutting edge? And the second, why don't you tell us your secrets about what you're going to do? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the latter question, I'm not sure if I could disclose the secret. It's, but I think when it keeps the cutting edge, just following our mission of facilitating authentic human connection. And right now it's video, right? With video technology, web RTC, uh, with telecommunications infrastructure now advancing to 5G, it just makes our platform better. So video, that video experience fits really well right now. Eventually in the future, uh, having some sort of like avatar, but actually looking like that person, because we don't want you to look different because that that's not what our app is about, but having a, a visual uh, experience where you're with someone, like that'd be amazing. And being in like a bar, a coffee shop in Paris. So that's definitely down the line. Right now we're just trying to nail uh, video speed dating and facilitate connection. I love that idea. I, I, I really do. Uh, you know, a little cafe in Paris. Oh my God, that would be fabulous. <laughs> I'd go there in a minute, but I am married. I One want day. to remind you that. <laughs> so what about... What about, um, um, I'm not talking about menage a trois. I'm not talking about that. Although I suppose that's possible. Uh, what about double dates? What about triple dates? What about dates where they all get together in a, in a group, right? And, and you're not only looking at the one across the table, so to speak. You're looking at a, a, a possible assortment of other people that you might want to connect with. Um, and what about, and what about uh, gays? Where do they fit in yep. that too? I'm very interested. Yeah. So when you create your account, you could say if you're interested in men, women, or both, we have lesbian and gay date nights um, on filter off. And uh, again, you could set your preferences. Again, the app is for all people. So if you're into the swinging scene, um, you could join or create, if you if you run a sort of community, you could create that sort of event on filter off. Uh, love is love. And we just want to be able to facilitate that. Love is love. There's a lot of psychic benefit for you in that to create love, to create a platform that uh, that that, that uh, helps people enjoy love. That's a fabulous yeah. thing. You probably sleep well at night. Um, but but at the same time, I want to know where it goes for you, because this is obviously a, a great idea and it has all the marks of success, if not immediately, then going forward. Is this something you're going to stay with, Zach? Uh, is this something, you know, because a lot of entrepreneurs, they find a good idea and they develop it to the extent that, it, you know, it helps or it's a, liquid, a liquidation event, and then they move on. Are you a serial entrepreneur or are you a one company person? I mean, I'm trying to get this thing as large as possible and be, uh, when you think of meeting someone online, you think of filter ops. So uh, trying to hit the moon. So we're going up. We're all in on this. Good, good. Great idea. Uh, and it's, a, it's yeah. it, re it resonates with me because we do a lot of video, virtual video. And so what a great idea you had. You. And I think as time goes by, there'll be more technology that you will see and, and, and latch on to. And um, it's only good helping people. Thank you very much. Zach, Zach Schlein. Uh, Sch Schlein, got right? Yeah. Schlein, yep. Schlein, thank you very much for joining us today. Really appreciate the discussion and good luck to you. Thanks so much, Jay. Thanks for the time. Aloha.